Hi, this is Paul Har from the saxophonist.org, and I'm here with a play test and review of the very screw, variable mass neck screw from Sax Gadgets. You know, this past October, we were very fortunate to have the amazing Bob Shepard at the University of Nebraska, where I teach. And Bob and I were trying all the various heavy mass screws, and we were lamenting about how this one was really cool, but we wish it was a little bit lighter, and we like the feel of this, but it should be a little bit heavier. And, you know, we were really lamenting how there's no screw on the market or set of screws that you could try for various situations. Uh, and then one day I was on Instagram, and I see a post from a company called Sax Gadgets, right? Me and a company called Sax Gadgets. And it was marketing a heavy mass screw with a changeable insert so you could vary the mass. So I contacted them, and uh, Matt was really helpful in... Uh, responding and he sent me two sets of screws and what the system is is it has a either a brass or kind of a lighter bronze depending on what you get housing if you can see it here that's hollow and then you have a set of inserts you can get a standard or a full set of inserts um, that fit in using this little rubber o-ring and they just sit inside and then you can change the mass and thus the response or the tone um, on your instrument. So he sent me uh, two sets and uh, all the weights to try. And uh, for Yamaha and uh, Selmer Yadagasawa, uh, I'm going to have some of my guys try the uh, who play Yamaha try them out and give their impressions. And we'll have that in the complete full written review of this that you'll want to check out on www.thesaxphonist.org. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play these screws for you, but I'm going to just play a little snippet of, of each screw weight uh, in the uh, order that I tried them and kind of give you my thoughts about my first play test and then even now. So hold on one second. I'll be right back. All right, so the first instrument I played this on was a tenor saxophone because I thought this is, would be where I noticed the biggest changes. Now here is my tenor without um, one of the heavy mass screws on it, okay? <laughs> one of the, the brass insert, just to show you the difference. And then at the end, maybe I'll show the difference between the bronze and uh, the brass. Now, just to reiterate, you can buy this screw system with a standard set, which I believe is two inserts, or you can get a full set of inserts. After uh, having play tested um, this product, I really think if you're gonna try these out, you owe it to yourself to try the full set to find the screws, inserts that you like for your screw. Um, okay, so this is just the brass housing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the brass housing, 9.75, 14, 15, 18.7 grams, and 22.7 grams. And I'm just gonna play between uh, the various ones and then give you my thoughts. So this is just the screw, no insert. <laughs> Up there, 18.7. 
18.7 grams. <laughs> Heavyweight, 22.7 grams. Okay, now, I wanted to be honest with you. This, the tenor saxophone was what I tried first because I generally can feel the biggest change on tenor saxophone. And I was a little bit worried, you know. Oh, be right back. Okay. Um, I don't ever want a product that is sent to me uh, to review to fail. I want it to succeed because the more cool stuff that's out there, the more options and variety there are for saxophone players. But when I tried this on tenor, I have to be honest with you, I didn't notice much of a difference at all. Um, I noticed, obviously, going from a traditional neck screw to uh, the brass screw, uh, without anything in it, I already noticed, yes, there was a difference. And as I ascended in weight, I noticed that by the time I got to this 22.7 gram weight, it had m more resistance and probably more center to the sound. Um, but there wasn't much of a change in the sound that I thought really merited purchasing an entire set. It was not really anything extraordinary. And I was a little bit concerned, but I said, you know what, you gotta give it a shot. And so then the next instrument I went to was soprano. Now the reason why I'm not doing any transitions between this is I want you to know that I'm using the same reed, the same mouthpiece, the same instrument, and all I'm changing, even the same screw base, I'm just changing the inserts. So the next instrument that I went to was the soprano saxophone. Be right back. All right, I'm back. And so what I want to do is, once again, play this with the stock um, neck screw. Now, I was a little bit hesitant in trying to do a review with the Soprano because I have just switched after 15 years of playing a P. Moriart to the Yanagasawa W010. But you know what? I thought it's going to give me an idea of how the screw can affect an instrument. So... <laughs> To be honest, um, the various heavy mass products that I have used on the Yanagasawas have made a difference, but not necessarily one that I wanted to make a change to. So again, here's the brass housing with no insert. Seven five. Fourteen grams. Eighteen grams. And then <clears throat> the whopping heavyweight twenty two point seven grams. Uh, 
Okay. Now, let's talk about that. Oh, let me get this one that went astray over here. All right. So, I have to tell you that I was really pleasantly surprised that when I switched to a different instrument, I could tell a difference. Um, I liked this screw system, or, or, or I should maybe say, I found it a bit more effective when I switched to a different instrument. I don't know why. Usually I tell the biggest amount of change on a tenor saxophone. But here in this instance, the soprano was clearly uh, better for feedback. I noticed a difference when I moved from the Yanagasawa uh, screw to the, to the Vera screw housing and found the greatest amount of uh, playing ease between, believe it or not, the 14 gram and the 15 gram. Now, the two inserts, be right back again. This is probably a great time uh, to uh, explain that if for no other reason, a screw like this is very good, especially if you have bad carpal tunnel hands like I do, uh, ergonomically. So beyond any sonic capabilities, this seems to do well. Okay, the difference between a 14 gram and a 15 gram is really like a, what, a paper clip? But one is brass and I think the other is steel. Now I don't know what the uh, internal, uh, or what the quality of the material will be, uh, on the sound. I just know that um, I could feel a difference, but I really thought that the 22 uh, gram weight gave me a little bit too much back pressure. But you know what? Something interesting. As a reed starts to die and you lose that back pressure or that resistance that you want, you can just pop in a different weight and almost regain it. Um, now, I should probably say, you may hear complete differences from what I hear behind the horn. That's an important factor in trying out these, uh, these screws. And that is, um, a screw like this is valid if it does one of, of a few things. First of all, if it just makes it easier to put on, worth its weight in gold, trust me, when your hands start hurting, you'll believe this. Um, one little downside about this is how many times have I dropped these weights? Okay, so if you're not really nimble, be aware of that. Uh, another thing to be thinking about is sometimes it will have no sonic change on the instrument that you're aware of. But when you listen to it on, the, on a recording or when, um, you know, a video, something like that, you go, wow, I really like that. So if it doesn't change anything for you, but it sounds better to your audience, don't just, uh, doesn't your audience deserve it? And then the other way is if it makes absolutely no appreciable change on the out, outer, you know, from the audience standpoint, but it makes the response of the instrument easier or better or different for you. So that's another thing to be thinking about. Okay, the last instrument I'm gonna try this on is on alto. And here's where I noticed the biggest amount of change. Okay, like soprano, I just switched to this W10, W010. And let me just play a little bit without, with a stock screw. <laughs> Okay, so then I'm going to try the screw with just the housing and no insert. Fifteen grams. <laughs> 
Seven grams. <laughs> Interesting. And then twenty two grams, excuse me, twenty two point seven grams. <laughs> You know, I have to tell you that it was on alto saxophone that I noticed the biggest change. And maybe it's just because I've been playing a lot of alto lately. And I have to tell you, um, this was fun on the alto saxophone. I personally liked the 14. <laughs> and the 15. And I have to tell you, the difference from the player standpoint was the brass 14 gram was just slightly darker, had a little bit more richness and resistance. And the 15 had all the resistance, but was just a bit brighter from my standpoint. Again, you may notice nothing. The last thing I want to show you is the difference between um, what is that five? Um, the lighter bronze housing and the brass housing. Uh, I'm going to use the 14 gram weight. Um, I can tell you right now, one of the things I, I appreciate about this product is the fact that, you know, often with these screws you'll, be, you'll get threadings that are supposed to be for Selmer slash Yanagasawa. And um, you get it and, boy, you get the screw halfway on and then you realize, man, it's not threading right. And the last thing you want to do is damage the internal threads. So uh, my experience with, with the various screw, there's no movement, um, it is solid. All the parts are remarkably well made, and in fact, I was thinking the, the amount of work that must go into machining this. Um, okay, so let's try this. This is first the brass screw. The bronze feels just a little bit freer. Now, let's add the 14 gram weight. This is bronze with the 14 gram weight. And then what we're going to do brass, and we're going to just remove the fourteen gram weight from one and put it on the other. So that is the Vera screw system. So I have to tell you, what are my final thoughts? When I first tried it, I thought, man, this really doesn't make much sense. Um, 
I could tell that there was a difference, but you know, do I really need all these inserts? And you know, yeah, it felt good, and it, and it, it did a nice job of you know, stopping the neck from moving, but it really probably wasn't worth all this trouble. And then as I started to try the various instruments, I started to notice the sonic effect. And then talking with Matt, the, 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 the creator, uh, he said that he's primarily an alto player and that's what he developed the screws on. So maybe that's the reason why the screws have been so unique on the alto saxophone. Maybe there's a different design or something that on the tenor saxophone, or maybe it's just me. Here's what I'll say. Like all the products that I mentioned uh, as part of this review, there is no screw, no matter what size, what insert, or what material that's going to make a player who hasn't worked on their tone and their technique, uh, basically the fundamentals of being a good saxophonist, there's no product out there that's going to make you sound good. So this product I actually think is really worth it. And for those who can tell a difference, it's certainly worth an investigation. I would recommend that you try them, but also get a full set of weights so you can see all the various changes. And try this in a variety of different rooms, on a variety of different instruments. I think you'll be very pleased. For a complete written review of the very screw system, as far as, and as well as interviews, uh, special features, CD and product reviews, please check out www.thesaxphonist.org. Thank you.